So while waiting, uh, do you guys have a question regarding with our topics last meeting? Question, guys, or uh, anyone who has a concern. So this is now the perfect time for you to uh, say your, uh, you know, the things that you need to ask or the things that you need to clarify. All right, so have you guys checked already the solutions of your midterm exam? Mr. Santa Cruz, Ms. Magay, Mr. Dulay, Mr. Seguibo, Mr. Masuela, Mr. Gangas. Dipa, sir. Okay, so I, I have announced that one last week, I guess. So right here, just uh, open up, not this one. This one, the Zoom meeting today and canceled. So yeah, we have a web we have a webinar uh, on that day, so we wasn't able to uh, meet last meeting. So just download this uh, calm scanner. Okay, so this is the PDF that I am showing to you guys right now, so that you guys can have your own copy with your uh, of your uh, midterm exam. All right, so Mr. Santa Cruz. Uh, were your uh, concerns regarding with uh, exam were answered? Sagutan ba yung mga patanungan mo regarding with your midterm exam? All right. Okay, so we'll just uh, go over on your midterm exam real quick. So maybe five to 10 minutes. All right, so it's already 3.35. Okay, so maybe the others will just uh, catch up to us. Anyway, so again, good afternoon. So uh, before we start with our uh, quick uh, review of your solutions on your midterm exam, uh, I would I just would like uh, to let you guys know that this is already our last meeting. So as you guys can see, this coming Friday, which was supposedly, uh, which will supposedly our next meeting, uh, is actually holiday. So. We won't be able to meet this coming Friday. And next week, 13, April 13, will be your final exam already. Okay. So I didn't expect that, you know, having that webinar and then having that uh, whole week and then having this uh, holiday again this coming April 9 uh, will cost us so much, you know, to uh, lose uh, many meetings, which was supposed to be. Uh, will uh, consume as our uh, discussion day. Anyway, so we will try to finish uh, two topics today. Okay? And then one additional topic, which I think we will not be able to discuss anymore. However, I will uh, leave that one as your, uh, as a homework, okay? Not a practice uh, homework because you don't know how uh, that one worked yet. But I promise you guys that the last topic the delta to y and then y to delta transformation is super easy. Okay, the same, the same with this one, the Norton's and then source transformation that we will discuss later on. So yeah, basically uh, the topics in finals is not that hard, okay, I'm telling you. So it's uh, a lot easier okay, once you have mastered the uh, past theorems that we have learned in midterms. Anyway, so I hope uh, we're clear with that.
So, are we clear with that one, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, I just would like to show to you guys the modules in kind of us. All right, so supposedly there's two modules that uh, we will discuss, but since we don't have enough time anymore, so uh, we were we will only be able to finish three modules in total: the Norton's theorem, the uh, the Tabernacle theorem, the Norton's theorem, and then the source transformation. Okay, later on. So this module then, uh, so we don't. I I I I am very sure that we don't have uh, enough time anymore to discuss this one. So uh, again, I would like you guys to do a self-study regarding with module 10. And one more thing. So here are the things that you guys will miss. Okay. So I will just announce this one. Okay. So this is actually the uh, last module that I had uh, last year. So that is why I have a different namings in modules. That's why I have here a revised module where in Delta Y is already module 10. Anyway. Uh, this uh, last two modules, the Milman's theorem, theorem, and then the maximum uh, maximum power transport theorem. So I will just send this one to you guys, okay, uh, and my announcement. So make sure to download this one. So this will not be part of your final exam anymore since uh, we wasn't able to discuss the Milman's theorem and then the maximum uh, power transport uh, theorem. So just review the Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, uh, source transformation, and then the delta to y transformation, and by, uh, vice versa. All right, so just four topics. So expect that uh, there's only four items on your final exam. All right, so uh, one more thing. So I won't be giving a quiz anymore on module nine and 10, okay? So I'll leave this one as a blank. So uh, the uh, activity that you're going to do with this one, okay, module nine and 10 will be part of your final exam already, okay? So you guys will only have two quiz for this uh, finals, the Tevin's quiz, and then later on, I will uh, publish this one, the Norton Theorem. All right, so the due date of your Norton Theorem will be on April 15. So you guys have plenty of time, so... Yeah, nine days okay, for the uh, time for you to be able to finish in Norton Steel. All right, so yeah, I guess that's all. And uh, regarding with the uh, delta to y and y to delta, just uh, go with this one, the overview of, of the uh, week five and week six, because I have included here some of the uh, videos which I think uh, one of the best uh, uh, tutorials when it comes to uh, delta to y and y to delta transformation. So if you cannot uh, grasp uh, what are the others two uh, we're trying to explain. So I have here uh, uh, a Tagalog uh, video. So again, this one came from uh, that blogger uh, who's uh, yeah, engineered Matt who's uh, creating a tutorial in Tagalog version. So for the foreigners who cannot understand Tagalog, of course, this, you know, uh, try to understand the English version, okay, those two, number four and number five. All right, so I guess that's it for the short introduction about uh, everything. All right, so uh, are we clear with that one? Are you guys able to follow? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I clear? Or uh, my voice is uh, not that clear? Clear, sir. All right. So, anyway, so here's the solution of your midterm uh, exam. So number one is about uh, Ohm's law and uh, power. Okay, the concept of power. So we have here the required. So letter A is a total equivalent resistance, and then letter B is a total current, and then lastly is the power delivered to the 16 ohm load resistor. 
So the first thing that you need to do okay, regarding the letter A and B is simplify the circuit into a one series circuit. Okay. So uh, of course, the first thing you need to do is do it step by step. Okay. So just add everything first. Okay, and then whatever is the submitted uh, value of this 4 ohm, 4 ohm, and then the load persistence, okay, will be parallel with the uh, CD uh, node in here. Okay, so let me just make this one a bit bigger. Right there. Okay, so just solve that one, and then you will be able to uh, get the value of RCD. So again, just uh, get the uh, series value of your uh, R4, R4, and then R16, which is now this one, and then multiply it to R24, okay? okay. So I have to uh, do this one because they are in parallel with each other, okay? So just uh, simplify, and then you will get 12 ohms as the value of the RCD. So uh, they are still in parallel, so you're still going to have a hard time in uh, finding the IP okay, or the total current. So again, just do the same process, just add this one, six ohms plus six ohms plus RCD. And then whatever is the result, uh, do the computation in parallel with 24, okay, which is now this one for the RAB, okay? So here's the solution for the RAB, okay? So just simplify this one and then you will be able to get uh, 12 ohms. So in here, uh, you will be able to get already the R total, so 12 ohms plus 8 ohms plus 8 ohms, so give you 28 ohms for the R total, which is now this one, okay? And then once uh, you have already solved the R total, then you can now solve for the I total, since uh, E total is already given, okay? E total is 224 volts. So just use the formula of the ohms law. So... Uh, V divided by R or E divided by R, so 224 divided by 28, you'll get uh, a total current of 8 ampere. Okay, so this is already the answer, I guess, for the letter, is it letter A? Ah, no, letter B. Okay, so letter A is the total uh, resistance. Letter B is the total current, okay, which is now this one, okay, those two. And for the... Uh, power in 16 ohm resistor. So in here, what did I do? R A V is equal to R C. Hmm. All right. So in here, since you already have the I total, so let's go back to the original circuit. So once you have the I total, so you already know that uh, we have a current that is flowing in here, that is also flowing in here, and uh, flowing in here. So, okay, just wait a second. A divided by two. Ah, yeah. All right. So in here we have a total current of eight. Okay. So it will be divided by uh two paths or two nodes. So we have here. Uh, going down on the 24 ohms and then going uh, on the right for the 6 ohms, which will be divided into two. So instead of eight, okay, in total, we will become four in here and then four right here. So again, we have another path in here. So that four will be divided into two since we have another uh, split of uh, node in here or uh, wire. So two ohms in here and then another two ohms in here. So from here, you already know that the current that is flowing at this point is uh, two amps. So from there, you can already apply. Oops, where is that one? Here. So you can already apply the formula of P IV or P is equal to IV for the power. So P sub 16 is equal to I squared uh, uh, P16 for the uh, resistance on that uh, load resistor and then R16. Okay. So two squared times 16 will give you 64 watts, okay? So that's how we, uh, we've got the uh, answer on that uh, node, CD, uh, not CD, uh, 16, okay? Load resistor 16, okay? So four times 16, 64 watts. All right, so are we clear? Are you guys able to follow? Regarding with number one.
below. So I hope that you guys have already uh, saw this one so that you know we can have a faster uh, discussion or review. Okay. Anyway, for the number two, so this is the Kirchhoff's law, okay, KVL and PCL. So the question in here is, uh, it is asking us to get the value of IA, which is uh, the one that uh, in here, and then IB, okay, the one that is uh, in here. So as you guys can see, we can have two loop, okay, for this one, one for the inner, and then one for the outer. So for the inner, A, B, C, B, B, O, C, B, yeah, this is the inner, okay. So I just didn't draw the loop in here, but we have a clockwise loop in here, the A, B, O, C, B, A. So A, B, O, C, B, A. All right, so that's the first loop. And then we have here the second loop. So A, B, O, E, F, A. A, B, O, E, F, A, okay? So, uh, once you have mastered the Kirchhoff's uh, law, you know, having this equation are already super easy. So uh, again, just do a loop on this uh, A, B, O, C, B, A, and then you will have uh, this kind of loop and then put their uh, values, okay? The given values, the R sub I and then R sub L. And uh, in here, we have already applied the KCL, okay? Just, I just didn't show that uh, for the KCL on here, okay, on node O, we have uh, IP is equal to IA plus IB, okay? So we have uh, one going in, which is the I total, and then two currents are uh, living. So if it's, I mean, if it's uh, going in, it's positive. If it's uh, living, then it's negative. So that's how we've got this IP is equal to IA plus IB, okay? So in here, just uh, sub substitute the uh, value of, uh, uh, IP, which is IA plus IB, okay, in here. And then you will have uh, this equation, all right? So I will leave the analysis part with you guys. So uh, if you have a question, so feel free to message me. So this is the equation number one for the loop one. And then for the loop two, again, uh, saying just do a loop on the outer part, okay? And you will have, or you will get this equation number two. And then from here, so uh, we can use simultaneous equation. So our goal here is to eliminate one uh, variable or two variable, okay? So in that case, we'll be able to solve for one unknown. So in here we have, uh, or we were able to eliminate, what is the thing that we were able to eliminate? All right. So I guess we wasn't able to eliminate uh, anything since we still have the IA and IB. However, this is already a new equation. So you could name this one as your third equation. And then IA plus IB, what did I do in here? So we have this equation for IA, okay, which is now the new equation, which is named equation two, where in IA is equal to 0 0.4 IB divided by 0 0.32, which came from this uh, simultaneous equation. So let's just say that this is a simplified equation, okay, of IA. And the next thing that I did in here is I eliminated the denominator, which is uh, 0 0.32. So just multiply everything by 0 0.32, and then you will get this value, okay? And then just uh, add the uh, common variables, which is the IB. And then from there, oops, what happened? Where is my IA before? Okay, let's go back in here. Five. Ah, I see. All right, so from here, we have already used the equation number two, okay? And we have already substituted the value of IA in here, okay? Leaving as one variable only. And then from there, just simplify or just add everything that is similar uh, for the IB. Then it will leave you this uh, equation. And then you can now find the one uh, missing variable or the unknown variable. So IB is equal to 11.2 divided by 0 0.56. So just do the math and then you will get 20 amps. So that's it for the IB.
And then for the IA, so uh, things now are super easy since you have the value of ID. So you can use this one, okay? Just substitute the value of ID in here, which is 20, all right? So just do the math on here and you will get 25 amps for the ISA All right, so I hope you guys were able to uh, follow or get on how did we get those currents on IA and IB. No. Are we clear with number two, guys? Clear, sir. All right. So I really hope so. Anyway, so since we have already the IA and IB, then if we have one more question, we're in looking for I uh, I total, then we can just simply add twenty plus twenty five per eight to give us forty five amps as our total current okay moving on with the number three so we have here the mesh mesh analysis yeah all right so in here uh this one is actually quite long however again i mentioned in our past meetings that if you can uh you know reduce this one without the use of simultaneous equation in calculator then are uh, better since you have a good practice already uh, when it comes to solving things you know, in uh, looking for unknowns. But to make things easier, since we already have our calculator, so you can uh, use your calculator. So you have to maximize the usage or the functionalities of your calculator. So just have three loops. So loop one, loop two, loop three, okay? Wherein you will get those uh, equations and then just use simultaneous equations by a calculator, and then you will get those values. So I1 is 50 amp, I2 is 30 amp, and then I3 is negative uh, 10 amp. So the question in here is uh, loop currents for I1, I2, and I3. So we have already answered the letter A. And for the letter B, so in here, what happened now in here? I A is equal to I11. equal to I1 where is our I1 I1 minus I3 anyway so it seems that the one that I did in here is quite confusing but you can apply KCL in here wherein it will lead you to uh, I1 is equal to uh, I, IA plus this one. I, you can name this one I2 since we have a current here, I2. But right here, the name of this one is IA. And since the uh, name of the resistance is RA. But for this one, for the R2, okay, this name is just uh, call this one uh, I2 as it is. So I think this is where I have got this one, okay? Where in IA is equal to I1 or IA minus I2. And from here, we already have the value of uh, I1 and I2. So you can already solve for the value of uh, IA. Where in 50 minus 30 is equal to 20 amps. Okay, so that's the value of IA. And for the letter B, which is now for the IB, okay, so from here we have uh, I2, okay, we have I2 going in, and then we have two uh, currents uh, going out, which is the uh, IB plus I3, okay. So from there we can solve the IB since uh, I2 or I, now I'm confused. Anyway, since uh, it's easier to see this one if we have the uh, exact loopings and then exact uh, PCL. So I will leave this part to you guys, okay? So if we will uh, analyze this one again, since I already forgot, okay, I created this one last week. But this is the, uh, the solutions. So if 
uh, there is uh, something wrong or if there is a correction uh, upon you guys checking uh, my solution. So just let me know. Okay, maybe I made a mistake. But yeah, that's how I've got the values for IA and uh, the EA. All right, what else? And then from here, you can already get the V11. Since we already know the value of I11 and then R11, the R11 is uh, 11 ohms, and then I11, uh, is it I11? Uh, IA, rather, sorry. IA is already in here, which is 20 ohms. So from there, you can already solve for V11. And then we have here the V5.2 which is also the same process. So as long as you know the currents that is flowing in there, so you will be able to solve the V5.2, okay? okay? All right, so for the letter C, the power taken by the load, load resistors. See, even, even me, I don't understand my handwritten. What is this load? Load, load, load rest resistors. The power taken by load resistors. Set load resistors. E11. And E5.2. So I think this is a typo. So I think uh, the question here is the powers taken by the load resistor. So just remove that one. Okay, and then our load resistors is this RA and RB. Okay, so since we already know the uh, current that is flowing in RA and RB, which is the I11 and I5.2, or the I1 and I2 rather. So you can already solve for the power. So just again, use this formula. P is equal to I squared times R or PIV if uh, voltage is given. So any of those uh, will give you the same result. So here's the formula for the, I mean the solution for the uh, I squared times R. And then here's the solution for the uh, IV or EI okay? or VI. Okay? So it will give, uh, it will give you uh, the same result, 4,400 on both of those. Okay, as long as you have the correct uh, solution and correct values. And from here, you can do the same. So we have here the I squared times R times the uh, IV okay, or EI. All right, so it will also give, yeah, give you the same uh, result. Okay, so those are the powers for the load resistors. So yeah, that's it for the uh, mesh analysis for the number three. So look for the three loops and then you'll be able to get the three currents and then look for the indiv individual currents of your uh, load resistors. And then from there, you will be able to get their individual voltages. Okay, right here, V11 and V5.2. Okay, or the voltage across uh, this load resistor. And then finally, you'll be able to get also the uh, power since you already have the current and then the voltages. All right, so any questions so far regarding with number T? So we can go back and discuss it. All right, so sorry guys, if I cannot explain this one properly, especially for the uh, currents, Anyway, I guess uh, we are just missing more uh, elaborations when it comes to my solutions. But yeah, that's how uh, I've got the answer. Anyway, for the number four, so in here we have superposition theorem or superposition method. Well, actually, uh, this one is actually super uh, easy, especially that you know we already have one given voltage across on the entire circuit. So again, going back to the uh, rules in parallel. So whatever is a voltage on this uh, node okay, or in this branch is already the same on the other nodes. Okay, So that is why I have mentioned here by inspection and then by using superposition method. 
because in inspection, we will be able to find already what uh, we are trying to find. So the required here is what is the voltage across EA and what is the voltage across EB. Okay. So in here, by inspection, so you will be able to get uh, already the voltage uh, across uh, EF. Okay. Since we have the voltage on EC and then we have the uh, current on RC. And then we also have current, I mean resistance in RC. And then we also have the current on this uh, branch, which is 12 amps. So from there, we can already solve the total voltage across this EF. Wherein, of course, you have to uh, add, okay, wherein EC plus the uh, voltage across RC, okay, wherein we have uh, IC times RC, so 12 times 1.5, which is now it's 1. So just add those two, will give you 30.2 volts. So from there, you already know that the uh, voltage across here is 30.2. It's just that you know you have to deduct this one, okay? Because uh, of course it will pass through uh, that resistance, so it will give you a voltage drop, and then whatever is the remaining voltage at this point, okay, is already your uh, EB or your voltage across uh, this uh, at this point okay, or at this uh, EB source. Okay, so that is why we have this solution right here. So EA is equal to VAB minus IA times RA. So just get the voltage uh, across or the voltage drop in here and then deduct it to our 30.2 uh, voltage. So as you guys can see right here, we have 18.2 volts, okay? So we have a voltage drop of 12, yeah, 12 volts on uh, this part. So yeah, that's already the answer for the EA. However, of course, since uh, I'm requiring you guys to do this one in uh, superposition method. So I need to see the solution on superposition, superposition uh, solution. So the same with EB. So we have 30.2 at this point. Okay, so we have to deduct whatever is the voltage drop across here. So 30.2 minus 2 times 8 will give you 14.2 volts. Ah, sorry. The one that we have solved a while ago is the uh, EA, this one, and then the one that we are sol solving now is the uh, EB, which is this one. Okay, so uh, it's the other way around, so it's opposite. Anyway, so on the EB, we have 14.2 volts, and then on the EA, we have 18.2 volts. And then with the use of uh, superposition method, so everything now is a lot easier since, you know, uh, you can eliminate one source and then the main one source uh, for you to be able to solve the uh, unknown on that uh, remaining source. So from here, it's now less complicated. So again, this apply uh, Ohm's law or the parallel uh, you know, solution on Ohm's law. So whatever is a voltage across here is the same right here since they are in parallel with each other. Okay, So just take note that when applying superposition theorem, if it's if it's a voltage source, then you have to short that uh, certain terminal. If it's a current source, then you have to leave it open. But in here, since we have a voltage source, so we have to short uh, this path right here. Anyway, so basically the same uh, method with our inspection method. So uh, we have this uh, voltage 32.2 right here. So it, it will flow right here, then just the depth whatever is that voltage drop that to pass through. So VAB minus four times three or 30.2 minus 12 will give you 18.2 volts. So as you guys can see, it is super the same with our uh, inspection uh, solution. All right, so the same uh, concept with the uh, shorted terminal in AB wherein you are not looking for the uh, voltage across AB. So whatever is a voltage that is uh, we have in here is also the same in here. So the same, just uh, get the total voltage across here. And then at this point, just deduct the voltage drop. Okay, is it the voltage drop? Because we have a flow of current from here to there. So let me just check. 
Now plus equals to easy plus IC times RC, okay? The voltage minus IB times, ah, yeah. Okay, so we have minus, which uh, means we have a voltage dropping here. Right, and you will get 14.2 volts. So basically 30.2 minus uh, 16 uh, volts will give you 14.2 volts. So yeah, that's how we uh, solve the number four. Right, so are we clear so far? Any question? Answer. Okay, so just let me know if you guys are confused in one part. Anyway, so we'll, we don't have enough time anymore, so we will just continue the rest on the part two, okay? For the number five. So goodbye for now and see you guys later. Bye, sir. Goodbye.